So welcome to our review on the Resident Evil 8 Winter's Expansion, the brand new DLC for Resident Evil 8. And we've been looking forward to this because we played a lot of Resident Evil 8. Just a tiny bit. How many times have you finished the game? I eight, ten, a dozen, <laughs> a, a lot. A lot of times. Lot. Unlocked everything, did every single thing in oh, the game. God. It was incredible. So, so this DLC has been coming and I kind of got excited about it. I got to say... The one thing I was the most excited about was Shadows of Rose. Oh yeah. And I want to say this is a no spoiler uh, review, no so you're, you're okay. Yeah. And it's going to be difficult because there's a lot of stuff that's oh, going on in there. I think the first thing we should talk about is some of the additions with this DLC to the original game. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. It's Resident Evil again because they have the third person camera angle finally. What do you think of that? Honestly, at first, I kind of, because I've seen 7 and 8 as their own thing. Yes, of course. And it's a new trilogy that they were running and all the rest of that. I was like, okay, I like that it's first person. So to me, the idea of putting it in third person seemed almost like a step back in my mind oh. until I saw it. Right. And it was when you said, as we were first looking at it, this finally feels like Resident Evil again, that my mind kind of went, you know what? Actually... Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. Sh I should say, I don't hate the first-person perspective. No. I, I actually enjoy it. Yeah. But it felt like, oh, man, it's a bit of a return. It feels like a bit more like four and five, you know, in that aspect, looking over the shoulder. I like that. And the one thing that I do want to say with that new camera angle added in, it changes the perspective of the entire game. Oh, yeah. Even going and seeing the dealer, uh, you know, the selling Duke. weapons. The Duke. He the Duke. I had no idea how freaking huge that guy was. Yeah, you know, when you're looking in first person, you kind of look up at him and he seems, he's a big guy. But when you see your character standing in front of him, you're like, it added a whole different dimension. Me and oh, yeah. Rob were, were shocked. We're like, we're going, oh my God, like how big he is. It's weird. Oh yeah, it was, it creepy. was terrifying. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. when they saw it, I thought, remember that movie Ben or whatever it is? Oh yeah, yeah. Gods, that giant baby hand that comes in at the end? Yeah. His hand looked like that. I was like, oh yeah. God, it's like the size of my head. It was, it was a bit surreal. So we, we enjoy that that's being added to the game. Yes. It feels right. And uh, that's perfect for that. And next up is something that I must admit, I'm not uh, crazy excited about it. It's neat that it's there. I think a lot of people will enjoy it. Yeah. Mercenaries mode. So yes, Mercenaries mode has uh, been updated. They've added, um, most specifically, there's uh, new costumes and skins coming, but they're adding a ton of characters. And of course, the one that most people are going to be excited for is Lady Demetrask, Demetrescu, however people want to pronounce it. Yes, the the big booby goth lady, vampy mommy, nine foot tall lady. I call is her, playable. I call her Lady D to make it easy. Lady D, Lady D, for sure. Lady D's for sure. She's back uh, for yep. that. So that's kind of cool. You can do that. I think what we want to jump right into right yeah. now. We're kind of glossing over this but, because because we want to get to this, and that is the big selling point for me <sighs> was Shadows of. Rose, yes. Because it's a kind of a, a continuation from the end of eight. And for any of you that haven't seen the end of eight, maybe stop and go and play eight to the end and all that. For any of you who know and saw the ending and yeah. knows what happened, this starts right after that and yep. you continue on. And this is kind of a bit of a side mission in a way. It's, it's, um, it's, yeah. I think it's partly helping to set up nine. Yes. And I'm not going to go into plot details because, again, spoiler free. Yeah, no spoilers. But I think it is setting up nine. I think it's also kind of giving a little more closure and a little more background on Rose and on her situation. Yes. Her connection to all of the stuff that happened in eight. That's very good, Rob. You did very good by, by avoiding so, any spoilers yes. there. Yeah, very so good. It, but it really does give that perspective and I felt this was such a well-crafted addition to the canon of that story. Yes. That was, it, I think it'll really satisfy fans of Resident Evil 7 and 8 and the story arc in an amazing way. Yes. It, it, it again, trying not to, mm, it's tough, but it really brings you back to those situations through the eyes of this new character. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and it really helps her process where she comes from, who where she, she is. Where she's at right where now. Where she's at right now. Yeah. And, and, and helps her to try and cope with her life yeah. as a teenager that through no interest or fault or anything else of her own, 
was thrown into these circumstances. Yes. And how you deal with that, how she deals with that in mentally, emotionally, and physically. And the, the interesting thing is, it's a very different kind of little adventure you go on yeah. than what you've been used to. I will say that there are reused assets, as you would expect, but man, do they ever bring it up. Oh. oh my god, it's not just like, oh, you're running through the castle again or anything like that. There's a lot of work being put into this. It's not a oh, cheap, yeah. no, no. it's not a cheap cash in. Meanwhile, we're wondering at first, like, oh, well, this piece be like a bit of DLC, you know, you run around the places you've been and all that. No. no. No, no. It's its own unique story, too. Look, I'm getting right? goosebumps thinking about how yeah. much, I mean, yeah, they took the assets and they use them in such creative ways. Yeah. They, you know the section I'm thinking about specifically, Many. and I'm not going to mention There's a it. a couple of them. You will know, but, yeah, but, but I mean, you look at it and then they, they change it in ways that, although it's the same assets, yes. they change how you look at it and how you and deal how with you it. And how you play and interact with it. Oh, that's so probably, good. That's probably the best way. And yeah, there's a bit of survival horror in there, for oh, sure, yeah. oh, like, you, so, like you yeah. would expect. And it is a bit challenging. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. There's a little few bit moments when you're like, oh my god, I'm down in my last moment. Yeah. But then there's other gameplay elements that I really don't want to talk about too much. Yeah. No, we don't want to get into. We don't want to get into too much that Rose can use, and that opens up the game and changes the game and makes it a very unique uh, Resident Evil experience. Yes. And to itself, and to itself, and um, yeah. If I may, I think yes. one of the things about that that I actually really appreciated is that it, it does take away a lot of the run and gun that was sort of amped up for seven and eight. Yes. And forces you to step back from that a little and really focus on ways to avoid combat as much as possible. Yeah in order to complete this. But it's really kind of designed to be more of a story focused bit. Yes. So it's about Rose's story and kind of what's going on with her and stuff like that. And you're interacting with the environment, you're interacting, uh, fighting different creatures and things like that without giving too much away, without giving the story away. And in the end of the day, is it fulfilling? I felt it was. I did too. I really thought that this added a very vital piece to this story, to this overall narrative, that will be important going forward for the final, because Nine has been reputed to be the the last of what they call the Winter's Trilogy. Or That's the Winter's fascinating, Arc. yeah. So th they used this to help understand a little better what comes next. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of a, an emotional grounding bit for the character and going forward in that regard. I would say that for anybody who enjoyed 8 and yeah. you want to see a bit more of Rose's story, oh, yeah. you're going to get that. And it's fulfilling. we got to say this, it took us three and a half hours to get yeah. through it. And, and that's on medium difficulty. That's just regular difficulty going on there. And, so, and I, and I mean, I tend to be, I tend to be a bit slow. And and th by the way, thank you for letting me play some of this and and, and get my hands oh, yeah, on yeah, it yeah, and yeah, in no. there. How could like, I? How could I not? I mean, I mean, we're both big Resident Evil fans. It was a lot of fun just to have you over oh, yeah. to do it. It's like we were enjoying ourselves today. But I am used, as you know, one of those people that wants to try and find everything, explore everything, look for there every only, little clue. But you can only do so much. You can. There's only so much you can do. The the areas are there's a yeah. bit to explore, but not robust. It's not like. Uh, Resident Evil 8, the main game. Yeah. No, you no. can run back and forth and, and stuff like that. You can kind of go back a little bit at times, but you're always kind of going yeah. forward in the story and stuff like that. But uh, I think it's a very worthy game to play if you want more of uh, Rose's story because it's going to be that. It's a bit of survival horror, but it's not only that. It's a lot of other stuff going on in there that you interact with with the story. So it's very story uh, heavy and we really like that aspect. I can say for myself, I really, really like that aspect. Anything else you want to add? Um, you know what? I think overall, the DLC that they have made for this, this shows that Capcom is listening to a lot of their fans, in my mm. opinion, about Resident Evil and about what we like and what we miss. Because mm. I know a lot of people, uh, some folks really like the run and gun and heavy action, and some folks prefer, and a lot of folks have said they miss that sort of harder survival horror where you are watching your ammo, watching your health a little more closely. Yeah. It delivers a bit more of that. Yeah. And I think this is a nice medium they've found now to, to work with, but overall with the addition of the different characters to the mercenaries mode, with all of the stuff they've thrown together, and, and considering that the, the price uh, as a standalone, if you've already got the game, is I think around 20 something bucks. 20 something in that zone. Dude, deal. Deal and a half. Triple yeah, deal. I mean, it is amazing. If you're a Resident Evil fan, you're going to eat up anyways. We don't have to yeah. convince anybody and stuff but, like that. But it's, I think this is Capcom 
starting to try and return to form, at least for this franchise. Yeah, I, and you know, the one thing I will say about Shadows of Rose is I, I saw a level of caring that went in, into the design of the entire, uh, you know, d DLC aspect of this little expansion, and uh, the attention to detail and attention to caring of story, I thought was really, really nice. And I can't say any more than that. So, guys, are you going to pick up this new expansion? Let us know down below. So, anyways, guys, until next time.